Welcome back, True Believers, and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another very exciting episode of Marvel Spider-Man 2 101. And with only less than 25 days to go until this game fully releases worldwide, the overall hype levels for Marvel Spider-Man 2 are genuinely at an all-time high. And here's hoping that this video will be able to raise your hype levels even higher, where today I will be fully breaking down quite a lot of miscellaneous information pertaining to Marvel Spider-Man 2, which I never really got around discussing in any of my previous 101 videos. But nevertheless, all these Marvel Spider-Man 2 features are still critically important to the overall aesthetic that Marvel Spider-Man 2 is going for. Where, in all honesty, it really does seem like that this game is shaping up to be one of the greatest open-world Spider-Man games ever made. So if you're someone like me who's beyond excited to finally get their hands on all these features within the game, then definitely be sure to flip that like button and subscribe to the channel for any major Marvel Spider-Man 2 content in the future. So just to reinform all of you is that during my hands-on time with Marvel Spider-Man 2 is that I was personally able to actually experience some of these features for myself. And coming from someone who has thoroughly played through both Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales, Marvel Spider-Man 2 in comparison is seriously shaping up to be the most polished iteration of Insomniac's traversal system that we have seen to date. Where for starters, a lot of people were originally complaining with in Spider-Man PS4 and Miles Morales that the wall crawling speed that both Peter and Miles have is just too slow. Especially if you take the time to look back at previous open world Spider-Man games like that of the Spider-Man 2 movie tie-in game, as well as Spider-Man Web of Shadows, the standard wall crawling speed in those games is definitely faster. Well, for the case of Marvel Spider-Man 2, that has been fixed without a shadow of a doubt. Where during my hands-on time with the game, I did experience firsthand just how much faster the wall crawling speed is within this game, which is certainly one of many of Insomniac's methods as to how exactly they fully refine the Spider-Man traversal experience. And crazily enough, the same thing can be said when it comes to Spider-Man actually traversing across water. Where during my time with Marvel's Spider-Man 2, I was able to fully play through the PlayStation Showcase demo that we saw all the way back in May. And during this sequence, the senior community manager of Insomniac Games himself of Aaron Jason Espinoza did go on to tell me me that I should try and go towards the water, where even though I was pretty confused as to why he would tell me this, considering that I thought that this would simply mean that I would be going into the water for a swim, Spider-Man then proceeded to do one of the most insane things I've ever seen within an open world Spider-Man game, which is straight up surfing on water, which is not only a brand new traversal mechanic which has never been featured in any open world Spider-Man game before, but this is directly ripped right out of Insomniac's previous open world event with that of Sunset Overdrive. So, for example, even if you end up losing all of your momentum while using the web wings to try and glide over the water banks from island to island, even if you're going fast enough, you will be able to surf right over the water and jump right out of it and going back into a web swing or using the web wings, while still thoroughly maintaining a good sense of speed. So yeah, Insomniac is absolutely cooking when it comes to perfecting both Peter and Miles' traversal systems, which I for one just can't wait for all of you to get your hands on by the time the game releases. And speaking of Peter and Miles, this is where we get to what I believe to be the most innovative aspect about Marvel's Spider-Man 2, where right after that PlayStation Showcase demo concluded, I was then able to fully swing around the city as Black Suit Spider-Man. And during this time, I simply saw another crime that was active in an alleyway nearby. But as I finished swinging over to the crime's location as Peter, I actually saw Miles already there as Spider-Man beating up the bad guys for himself. Himself. And during this moment, I was actually able to pull off one of the tag team takedowns that we've seen between Peter and Miles, which was the exact same tag team takedown that we saw all the way back in the 2021 reveal trailer by simply pressing the triangle and circle buttons when any Spider-Man is nearby. And after the crime was totally resolved, this then led to Miles automatically swinging away off screen and then straight up saying to Peter, thanks for the assist, Spider-Man. And if that isn't one of the most awesome features to ever be incorporated within a Spider-Man game, game, then I don't know what else could be. And, in fact, this is only one of many occurrences that the player will be able to experience when playing Marvel's Spider-Man 2, where you will be able to see either Peter or Miles, depending on who exactly you're controlling at that point in time, throughout completely random points and moments within the city, which is easily going to make this game's open world as lively as ever. And I, for one, just can't wait to see all the other encounters that we will be able to have between Peter and Miles. Now, moving on from all those features, we're now getting into 
the elements of the Marvel Spider-Man 2 demo that I got my hands on, which I myself was not able to personally experience. But luckily, thanks to the wonderful people over at Insomniac Games themselves, we did receive even more information straight from the mouths of the developers going over some brand new mechanics and features that will be incorporated within Marvel Spider-Man 2's traversal system, as well as what you can experience within the open world. Whereas was stated by the Insomniac community director himself of James Stevenson, he did go on to post a link to this IGN article which states that yes, Spider-Man 2 has fall damage, but you can toggle it on and off. And as James said himself is that I like Doug also sliding in that Spider-Man 2 PS5 swing steering assist setting mentioned too. Where in a statement to IGN, senior programming director Doug Sheehan said the feature does exist in Spider-Man 2 and confirm fall damage is not enabled by default. Where to quote Doug directly is that something we're seeing more and more of is that players like to be able to customize their experience. For those players, we added the ability to enable fall damage, where the fall damage itself defaults to off within the options menu, and even let people tweak how swinging feels with our swing steering assist setting. We hope players who enjoy a deep dive into the details have fun experimenting, which I know for an absolute fact that there are a lot of Spider-Man gamers out there who have pretty much been begging for fall damage to be incorporated within Marvel Spider-Man 2 ever since it was last featured in an open world Spider-Man game with that of Spider-Man Web of Shadows, which if you know, fully released all the way back in 2008. So since it's been over a decade at this point since we last received fall damage in an open world Spider-Man game, this is undoubtedly going to be a welcome addition within Marvel Spider-Man 2's traversal system. And I know that I personally will be having fall damage turned on throughout my entire playthrough, just to make that overall immersion factor feel a bit more real. I also find it pretty interesting that they directly mention a swing steering assist setting, which, if you remember, was actually a feature that was incorporated within the Spider-Man 2 movie tie-in game, which essentially gave the web swinging within that game different difficulty levels. So seeing that Insomniac is once again incorporating this feature within Marvel Spider-Man 2 certainly shows how much depth this game's customization will have, and I for one can't wait to dive into it further. And to elaborate just a bit further on this game's traversal system, it was also confirmed by one of the Insomniac programmers that the slingshot mechanic that we did see all the way back in the PlayStation Showcase demo can indeed be used anywhere within the city. But like we saw in the demo is that there will be certain points within the Marvel's New York map where the slingshot ability can be used in a stronger manner by turning it into a super slingshot, just like what we saw with Miles in between those two antennas. But apparently, even if you simply press and hold L2 and X together, you will be able to instantly pull off a slingshot anywhere in the map. And I for one couldn't be more hyped. As it was previously stated by Insomniac is that on top of the new web swinging mechanics and the web wings, the slingshot ability within Marvel Spider-Man 2 will be able to make the player traverse around two to three times the speed in comparison to their previous Spider-Man games. Not only showing just how fun the slingshot's going to be to use, but also showing how critical it is when it comes to gaining speed within in the city. And being able to mix and match all these traversal techniques within Marvel Spider-Man 2 is going to be an absolute blast. However, if you end up deciding that you want to take a break from all the high-flying web sling and action, you can decide to go and have a little bit of fun at Coney Island. Whereas this info was directly confirmed by an article written by Gollum.com, is that we will actually be able to ride the rides at Coney Island. Whereas this article states is that we play our own games a lot. Two superheroes Heroes, a huge city, and a positive plot. Gollum spoke to project manager Jeanette Lee about Spider-Man 2. Whereas Gollum went on to ask Lee in a very well-oriented question, is that what are your thoughts on the future of open-world superhero games? And as Lee stated in an absolutely phenomenal answer, is that it's not necessarily about expanding a metropolis even further. It's about making the moment better, creating more exciting situations. We want players to enjoy every moment, but also to complete the story. The Coney Island Amusement Park in Spider-Man 2 is a good example of this. You can ride the rides and get to know the place, especially if you've never been there before. By the way, we built this environment during the corona pandemic, and it was almost a kind of vacation for all of us. And honestly, what else is there to really say at this point other than in Insomniac we trust? Marvel's Spider-Man 2 will be the first time ever within any open-world Spider-Man game that will actually be able to fully explore the District of Brooklyn as well as fully 
dive into Coney Island. And actually allowing the player to ride these rides whenever they feel like is straight up going to be a love letter for Spider-Man fans, but is also going to be extremely impactful for native New Yorkers who are going to play this game. And if all these features that I described within this video are merely a taste of the final product that Insomniac has in store for us, I for one can't imagine what they're hiding within their full release. But I guess we're just gonna have to wait a few more weeks until we find out for ourselves. And with all that said everybody, that's the video I have for all you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of all these hidden features for Marvel Spider-Man 2, and which one are you looking forward to the most? Let me know what you think, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy, and for more Marvel Spider-Man 2 videos like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, stay spectacular Spidey fans, and until next time, peace out.